Hi and welcome to another episode of Peacemake TV. In today's video for Lightroom, I'm going to show you how we can recreate this effect, a dark, moody, slightly horror film-esque or fantasy film kind of feel. We're going to use this image as a basis, and as always, I've got a free preset you can download with the link is in the description below. But let's stick around and I'll take you step by step through how you can achieve this effect and how you can tweak it to get it exactly how you want it for the any image that you're working on. So let's check all that out right now. So this is what the image looks like before we make any alterations to it. And as you can see, it's already quite a moody kind of image. So we've got a good starting point, but we're going to go through and enhance that considerably. So let's start off like always. We're going to go through the develop module on the right hand side. We're going to go through each of the different sections one by one until we end up with the effect that we want. So to start off with, let's open up the basics panel. And as usual, we can go through if you want to and color correct this if we want to go through and make changes to any of the tone and temperature. But for this, we're not going to worry too much about it because the image is kind of where I want it to be to start off with. Exposure is looking good, but we're going to take the contrast and we're going to give that a, just a little bit of a, a kick. So we're going to take that up to about plus 20, 22, just to give us a nice sort of contrast on the edges, just to make that sort of just a little bit more punch. We want that mood in there. We're then going to come down to the highlight shadows, whites and blacks, and we're going to go through to the highlights first of all, and I'm going to take those down to around about minus 30, 35, just to make sure that we've got some of the detail in there. And you can see when we do that, we bring some of the detail back in this sort of the misty area just beyond the figures. With the shadows, they don't really need to be touched too much, but I'm going to give those just ever so slight, slight boost, just a couple of points, nothing drastic, maybe five, that's looking good. The whites, we're going to just give those a little bit more of a boost. So we're going to get some nice contrast in this. We'll take that up to about minus, sorry, about plus 20, plus 18, plus 20 around there. And the blacks, we're just going to drop those down just to make sure that we've got some nice darkness in there. And about minus 18 is working nicely. So there's our basic corrections. We now want to get a little bit more detail in there. So we want to get some clarity. We're going to bump that up. And for this image, we're going to take that up to about plus 30, 35, somewhere around that kind of region, just to get some nice drama in the actual contrast in the image itself. So taking that through with the contrast and the highlight shadows, whites and blacks alterations, we've got a good starting point with a bit more tonal range in there now. Next thing, I want to boost the, the vibrance ever so slightly because what I want to do is I want to make sure that we retain some of the greens and the sort of, well, primarily the greens in this image, to be honest, the natural colors. So we're going to take that, we're going to give that a boost up by about plus 60, 65. It's going to look a little bit over the top at the moment, but you'll see why in a moment. So yeah, that's looking good. So we've got that green tint to it. But now I'm going to pull the saturation right back and kind of compensate a direct opposite to what we've got with the vibrance. So what we're going to end up there with is all of the other colors other than the green are going to become considerably muted. So take that down to a plus, uh, minus 60, 65, somewhere around there. And you can see now we retain the green colors in there, but we really desaturate most of the other tones in there. So we're, we're starting to get where we want to be. So next up, we're going to jump over to the tone curve. And if you're not in the point curve mode, all you need to do is click on this little symbol in the right hand corner and that'll switch between the two different modes. And once we're in the point curve mode, we can now start making the changes. So we're going to start off just by reducing the amount of black or changing the black point in the image. At the moment, the black point is set at the bottom left hand corner. As you can see, it's on full dynamic range. If I start to lift this up, we're going to cut where the black is allowed to be black and we're going to lighten those blacks. So we're basically going to take the, the deepest part of the image and say anything below that is going to be cut off. So in other words, if we take a look, if I drag that up, you'll see that the black areas start to become less black. So if we go crazy, you can see we can add a sort of a misty, foggy effect to it. We're not going to go crazy with that. We're just going to lift that up probably by about 10 or 15 percent and what that's going to do is when we start to apply the split toning it means that the tones that we're going to apply into the shadow area will start to show through just a little bit better they'll be a bit more prominent if we leave that at full black level then we'll find that none of that color will really be applied to it and we'll kind of lessen the overall effect now before i do anything more with the tone curve i'm going to come down to the split toning section we'll come back to that in a moment so come down to split toning what we're going to do is we're going to set the highlights and the saturation for that and the same then for the shadows. So first of all, we just do the hue slider and we're going to take that to around about 25. That's going to bring in some sort of orangey kind of colors into the highlights of the image. 
I'll do the saturation in a moment, and I'll do the same again for the shadows. And we're going to do the same kind of thing around about 21, 20, 21 on this. So we have a slight different color, but it's still going to be in the orange range. And then we're going to do is we're going to start introducing some saturation into it. So the highlights are going to start to pick up this orangey sepia kind of tone. We don't want too much of that. We're going to take that up to around about 25 to 30 percent. That's going to start introducing. You can see now the color of the image is starting to get some of that orange tone into the highlights so we start to get that slight retro feel to it so now the highlights have been given a little bit of color next up we're going to go to the saturation then on the shadow area and like i say now because we've opened those shadows up we'll start to get a little bit of color in there on this one we're going to go a little lower around about 15 to 20 percent so let's take that up and you can see that starts to bring in that that retro kind of color to it now this is not where i want it to be but we're going to go in now we're going to adjust the tone curve we're going to go in and adjust the, the individual values for the red green and blue to introduce colors where we want them to be so let's jump back into the tone curve what we're going to do now is at the moment we're in the full rgb channel so any alteration we make to this histogram is going to apply to the overall image we can come into the rgb section and we can target each individual color section so we can come to the red for example and you can see we now get the same tone curve, so we can create any tone curve we want in there, but it's only going to affect the reds in the image. And as you can see, we've introduced some red into this. So what we're going to do is we're going to do what's called a traditional S curve. So we're going to put a point in, a uh, point in there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to pull this down, so we're going to reduce the amount of red that's in there. And you can see that starts to make it a little bit more green. We're going to then take up and increase the red in the light areas. So the darker parts of the image are going to have that reduced red tone or the orangey kind of tone, but the highlights are going to have it boosted ever so slightly. So we're now going to do exactly the same for the greens. Same thing again. We're going to put that natural sort of S curve in there. Do the same. We're going to pull the greens down in the shadow area, and we're going to boost them in the highlight area. Now we can just tweak in this a little bit just to get it where I want. So we're pretty good there. Now we're going to do, we're going to come into the blue channel and we're going to do the opposite because we're going to introduce the blue into the shadow area. So where we've opened up those shadows, we're now going to boost the amount of blue that's in there. So we'll put the same two points in there, but we're not going to do an opposite S curve this time. So we're going to boost in the shadow areas and we're going to cut back in the highlight areas. So our shadows are going to start to take on this slight blue tint. Don't want to go crazy with it. It needs to be subtle. You can see we can tweak it, we can go crazy if you want, or the more I sort of boost that, you can see the more blue the overall image has, but we still keep some of that warmth in the highlights. So that's looking looking pretty good. We're going to cut back any blue in the highlight area. We want that orange kind of tone in there. There we go. So let's turn that on and off, and we'll see the difference. So this is before, and then this is after. So you can see now we've got that cool blueness in the shadows while we still retain that slight warmth in the highlights. So it gives us a nice effect. And there we go. That pretty much rounds up how you can do this. Now, there's another thing that I would probably do to this image to draw attention to those uh, figures that are sort of walking into the distance. If we come up to the radial filter, we can click on that. And now we can create a radial effect around the focal point of this image. So I'm going to create this circular effect reposition that where I want it. So now I can boost the feather in if I want to. I can check to invert the mask if I want to do the opposite way around. So you can see that what this is doing is just drawing attention to those figures. At the moment, we've got clarity set to minus 100. So we're using the soften skin effect. So I'm just going to go back and reset that. And what we're going to do is we're going to deal with just, we're going to boost the exposure ever so slightly. So we'll click on that and we'll draw attention. So what we can do now is we can take the exposure and we can just give that a little bit of a bump. Now you can see that's doing the outside of the image, which isn't what we want. So all I need to do is come down, invert the mask, and you can see that now focuses on the figures. So any adjustments I now make are only gonna be inside this circle and obviously showing the feather effect on the outside edge of it. If I press O on the keyboard, you can see that that'll show me the area of effect. And if I want to, I can boost the feather to get a softer transition around the outside edge. And I can press O again to turn that off if I want to. So now I can just adjust different aspects like the clarity, for example, or I can reduce that if I want to sort of soften those off a little bit. So we can come in, dehaze, just to make sure that they're really pushing the, the focus so they become the focal point. And again, we can tweak this now to get exactly what we want only inside that area. So 
just take the saturation just up ever so slightly now these are just little tweaks that i would adjust nothing drastic and this is based upon the image that you're working with so there we go so i'm going to say that's done click on down on there so you can see that that just draws attention to make sure that they are the focal point but that really is how you can just create this effect we've got that slight moody fantasy sort of film effect to it so before we wrap this video up let's just take a look at what the image started off like and how it is now in comparison so let's take a look this is where we were that's the original source image which you can see is okay but nothing spectacular and this is where we've ended up so you can see a much moodier looking image great sort of movie kind of fantasy effect anyway i hope you found this video useful if you want the preset that's completely free link is in the description below click on that and go and download it if you have any comments questions or feedback on this video or anything else we cover on the channel please pop those in the comment section below if you do enjoy the tutorials we put out on this channel please consider popping over to amazon where you can purchase the new ebook we released on the kindle store eight essential adobe lightroom techniques where we go into detail about different techniques that every Adobe Lightroom user should really have in their arsenal. The link is in the description below and your support is much appreciated. Well, until next time, take care.